came. Yeah. Out of curiosity. Not pity. If you're open for a shoulder to cry on. I'm not. Good. So what do you want? Of course, it, it wasn't really that bad until Norris started fiddling with it. That's beside the point. It was already cracked. Yeah, I bet you did it yourself because you're miffed over and laddered. Unlike some people, I have better things to do with my time than play practical jokes. So, what are you going to do about it? Well, as a favour to Mrs B, I bought it up. But no way we're replacing the glass. No, you don't even have to do that. But that's the least it could do. Well, go on, get on with it. Well, I can't do it now. I've got an audition to prepare for. Oh, is it the Bob Panto? Yeah, I'm auditioning for the part. Never mind all that. When are you going to do it? Tonight. But this is not a gesture of guilt. <laughs> <laughs> Want to try and put things right? Well, not put things right. I can never do that. Can you get to the point? Just want her to understand. Have you seen her? How is she? She's gone. Right? She couldn't get far enough away from you. You wrecked her life, Tony. Twice over. You wrecked mine as well as if you're interested. Trying to make amends. That's why I gave myself up. Oh, please. You expect me to feel sorry for you. Well, I don't. I'm glad you're suffering. I have to suffer every day. Because of you, I killed a man. I've got to carry that round with me for the rest of my life. But you didn't. What? That's why I has to see you. To tell you. Jenny's not dead. Nice walk. Yes, thanks. Do you feel better? A bit. Look, Ken, I... I know how hard this is for you, which is why I really appreciate you making the effort. Wow. Now, no more talk about it, eh? The gunfire has stopped. Let's just enjoy the silence. Tony. Look at me, Tony. What do you mean, Jimmy's not dead? He's not. Are you crazy? We both saw him. He was lying there. You took his pulse. No, he I... He was dead. I told you he was dead. I could see straight away as soon as I went over. You told me I killed him. It was a way out for both of us. That's why I put the blanket over him. So that you couldn't see. You bastard. Have you any idea what you've put me through? Every morning waking up, hoping it wasn't true, then remembering. Whatever I did, it was there. No going away. Now you tell me it never even happened. Scotch broth, Dev. Bottom shelf. Can I have a word? <laughs> yeah. What is it? Bye. <laughs> Look, Dev, I understand your concerns, I do, but I love Sunita. And I love those kids as if they were my own. Yeah, but they're not Matt. And they've got a perfectly good father here. <sighs> well, with respect, that's the point, isn't it? You're here, you're not there. 
They need a father figure in their lives all the time, not just occasionally. Well, you plan to be that man, do you? Well, obviously. Well, I'll tell you what. Since you're so desperate to have kids, why don't you go and make a few of your own? We plan to. Uh, I'll, I'll just pop back later. <laughs> hey, Matt. Now, you seem like a very, uh, reasonable man. I like to think so. Yeah. What, the kind who's always careful? You know, thinks before he acts? Plans where his holiday's gonna be like a year in advance? Yeah, puts a, a little something aside each month for his private pension. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> No. No, but you see, the thing is, I don't want my kids to be brought up reasonable. Because I want them to have fire in their bellies and I want them to care enough about things to get angry! And because I care about my kids, I will get angry and I won't be, uh, be civilised and I won't be reasonable. All right? Well, in that case, maybe you should just stop coming round because I will not have the kids or Sunita upset. It must have felt like manna sent from heaven. Not only do you get to keep your precious factory, you get to keep me quiet about Liam. Sorry. Somehow, Tony, sorry just doesn't cut it. So if Jimmy's not dead, where is he? I don't know. Police are still looking for him. Well, did he go abroad? What? I don't know. If I did, I'd have told them. So he's out there somewhere. No, and I nearly killed him. What if he finds out I'm back? What if he tries to get me again? He won't. How do you know? Because he didn't want to in the first place. He only came after you because I made him. What? You looked me in the eye and swore you never sent him. I was despicable. Be scared. I'll tell the police of what he did. He's already up for murder. He's got nothing to lose. <laughs> I've just swapped one nightmare for another, and I'm going to be looking over my shoulder for him for the rest of my life. Do you think she'll ever forgive me? for me, won't they? Eh? Well, seeing as I'm covering yours and Betty's shifts while you do the auditions. Hey, <clears throat> which one's better? You shall go to the ball! Or, <clears throat> you shall go to the ball! Well, you see, I'd be a better fairy governor. Give it a bit of glamour. You know, fishnet stockings, sparkly skirt, that sort of thing. It's Cinderella, not Puss in Boots. See what I can do with this. Next! Wish me luck. I mean, a nerve of a man. He's coming into my shop and he's standing off about my kids. Well, you did go round there, gun in for him. Hi, uh, a bottle of lager and a. Uh... And a uh, fizzy water. No, I didn't. Right. I didn't. He bought that on himself. Well, he seems okay to me. Yeah. yeah if you like patronising and smug and self righteous, I want you to cancel his golf lessons. You what? Yeah, please, all right? As a favour to me. Look, I am not getting caught up in your crossfire. Besides, I think you've been totally unreasonable. Rex is entitled to have a bloke in her life. Have you got kids? You know I haven't. No. So you really don't know what you're talking about, do you? And you call him patronising? OK, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit, uh, I'm wound up. Yeah, clearly. So, I tell you what, when you've de-stressed yourself, give me a call. Until then, don't bother. 
Daniel. Oh, uh, Dev. Yeah. I hope we're going to pay for these. Mate. Are you Peter Barlow? That's right, yeah. Would you care to comment on the public opposition to the bar you're planning to open? Not really, no. I believe this has split the family apart. Father and son in blazing bar battle. No comment. How do you know all this anyway? Is it true that you're an alcoholic? Yeah, boy. Do you care to explain to me why I've just been accosted by a journalist asking for my comments on the bar I'm planning to open? I think you've just answered your own question. Don't get smart with me. You promised you wouldn't write anything. And I didn't. No, you just got a reporter to do it for you. Well, he broke his side of the bargain, ploughing ahead, getting the builders in. He made it sound like we're opening a nightclub. I gave him the facts. Yeah. Including me being an alcoholic. You never. Well, it's hardly a secret. Yeah, well, he doesn't want it splashed all over the front page. How could you? Well, people have a right to know what's going on in their community. <sighs> I don't want to fight with you. Well, you're making a damn good job of it. This is out and out war. You'd better dig yourself a deep trench. Enjoy your meal. Well, where are you going? Anywhere that isn't near you. Yeah, I just feel, um, edged out. What, your ex is like, are you kids? Mm. Well, the kids, of course. Well, then make sure you know. How? Look, when I wanted Amy, I was as nice as pie to Tracy. My advice? Grit your teeth. Keep smiling. Even if you didn't want to smash his face. So, who have we got in for cinders, then? Uh, Becky and Claire. Could be awkward. Well, of course. You see, I mean, I've got to work with Becky. Hey, I hope you're not suggesting we rig it. Should I keep my fingers crossed? <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for me, yeah? Oh, oh, hold on a minute. <clears throat> OK, yeah, come on in. OK, so, you're the ugly sisters, right? Give me that line where I can't go to the ball. <clears throat> You can't go to the ball. Oh, yeah? Oh. Yeah, says who? Uh, says me. Right? Well, that's where you're wrong. Cos you two ugly old bats, no disrespect, Betty. Well, that's all right, look. You two are the ones staying at home. Me? I'm going out to have myself a good time. So put that in your pipes and smoke it. Peace. Um. So, what do we reckon? Well, you didn't really stick to the script. No. That's because I'm playing it for real. Cinders was a wimp. I'd give her some spirit. There's no, no way would she not no. go to that ball. Yeah, but then there'd be no story. Right. So, I mean, if, well, it was a very, very enthusiastic audition, love. Yeah. Uh, we'll let you know. Right. So much for crossing my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> How'd it go? Oh, not too dead yet. We'll see. Oh. Break a leg. I wish she would. She's been driving us mad all week. She had the kids running around pretending to be mice. Well, I wish her luck, because she's going to need it in there with them two. I mean, they're hardly Simon and Cheryl. That wouldn't be sour grapes, would it? No. You just turned down for fairy godmother. I think they've got someone else in mind. <laughs> hey, 
Now look, before you close it again, just like to say I haven't come to uh, cause trouble, I've come to apologise, I overreacted, and I'm sorry. Alright, fine. Apology accepted. Good. I'd like to apologise to Sunita as well. She's out. Well, uh, in that case, uh, can I wait? Well, I'd rather you didn't. I'm about to put the twins to bed. Please? And Becky, we thought that you would be perfect for the part of Dandini. Yeah. The prince's servant. Ah, yeah, but he's not just a servant, is he? I mean, in a way, he's more colourful than the prince. And funnier. Can I have a sword? Well, I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, John, you know when you say that the uh, the prince isn't colourful or funny, well, actually, I was actually thinking about putting a bit of Johnny Depp into the part. Well, actually, Graham, we decided that you weren't quite right for Prince Charming. Oh. We thought buttons instead. Oh. Right. Don't forget, we do need another ugly sister, you know, to be with Sean, right? No way. No. Although I would uh, consider being fairy godmother. Already cast, love. Who is it? Me. <laughs> you! <laughs> I'm doing this for nothing, you know. There's got to be some perks. Well, I don't see why I couldn't have been the fairy godmother. Oh. No, but I call it that. That's a bit obvious. Anyway, you'll make a brilliant ugly sister. Hey, Cinders, get down from that chimney, you mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Why? No, it wasn't auditioning. Julie, you're cast. No, no, no. Oh, go on, it's for charity. Yeah, and it's nice if you're going to find it hard. You're a pro, man. All oh, right, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, love, I didn't mean to startle you. I just... I saw the light on and I thought you must be working late. Oh, I've got a lot to catch up on. You look really stressed. It's just been one of them days, you know. One minute you're up, next minute you're down. Yeah, I know. It's not easy, is it? Well, look, uh, come to the pub, we'll have a drink. No, you're all right. Carla, sometimes it helps, you know, to, to get things off your chest. Might help some people. Personally, I just prefer to keep busy. didn't have to do this, you know. Oh, yes, he did. Guess what? What? I've just been checking my emails and we've won that competition. But the, the one for the toilet cleaner? Yes, oh. we have got £1,000! It's getting late. It's time they should go to bed. Well, it doesn't matter if they're up just a little bit longer. Matt and Dan see me off and right? Yeah, well, you won't have to deal with him in the morning. Come on, okay, let's go. All right, all right, hey, hey, just another few minutes. Now! All right, I'll put them to bed. No, they're used to me doing it. We've got our own bedtime routine. Oh, do you now? Oh, what is this? The army? Oh, left. Right, left, right, well, everything just falls to pieces and bits if, if your precious routine's just slightly interrupted. You can see yourself out, can't you? Come on, right, you lot, let's go run you a bath. Get your hands off them. Sorry? You're not bathing my kids. I beg you You're not time. going anywhere near my kids. What's going on? This. Well, you normally let a, a practical stranger put the kids to bed. I mean, he was going to give them a bath, for God's sake. What the hell is wrong with that? What? I hope you are not insinuating I'll what I think Andy you are. I'll upstairs now. Come on. How dare you? Matt's hardly a stranger. He's going to be their stepfather. <laughs> You're right. Over my dead body. And since when did that have anything to do with They're you? They're my kids. Right, my kids. 
So I have some say on who has the right to bring them up. Not anymore, you don't. And listen, why don't you just shut up? In fact, why don't you just go? Go and get out! Who the hell do you think you are? This isn't even your house! Well, I think you'll find it is, Matt, because I'm the one who paid for it. Matt, please. And you can get out of it now! Look, I'm just trying to protect the kids here! Well, they don't need protecting! In fact, they don't need you coming round here with your sick insinuations! All right, all right, so maybe I overreacted! Good at that, aren't you? So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to stand here and watch you make the biggest mistake of your life! You were the biggest mistake of my life! Get out! Go on! And if you dare come around here again without asking, I will stop your access altogether! No, you wouldn't. You watch me. You wouldn't! You wouldn't! Go to itv.com slash Cory for an exclusive interview with Alison King, who plays Carla. You do realise you just got married to Dan, you lunatic. There's something I need to tell you. You're not the 11th man I've slept with. Honeymoon's over. Loving by Numbers, Mr. 11 is next. <laughs>